Hey guys, this week we're talking about external resistance. So we're looking at the difference between straight straight weight bands and chains and specific adaptations from each. This week you're going to learn about the adaptations from straight weight, uh, limitations of straight weight and why. Dynamic variable resistance, that's also known as bands and chains, or accommodating resistance. Advantages from bands, advantages from chains. Straight weight and the adaptations. Really, straight weight um, is what happens is you're looking at the moment arm. And that's the distance, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force, so the bar, and as gravity acts on it. Uh, times you look at the mass of whatever's on the bar, say um, 100 kilos is uh, 220 uh, pounds. So 100 kilograms, that's the mass times 9.81 meters per second square. That's the acceleration of gravity. Anyway, wherever it becomes the furthest away from the joint perpendicularly from that line of action. So here you can see the knee. This is my man, Squat University, Aaron Horshik, um wrote, designed this little uh, illustration for us. And you see the, obviously the hip is where the majority of the force is experienced and it's maximized right at parallel. So this is the joint angle. When you're using straight angle, it's going to be strengthened the most. And as you stand up, not so much. So um, make sure I covered all this as the athlete stands, external resistance is minimized. So yeah, and you'll see in the next in the next little slide that uh, with bands that's changed. And by the way, you see the difference in a back squat and a front squat. So that perpendicular distance is kind of extended a little bit of the knee. So maybe the quads are working a little bit more. And this is him sitting back, you know, a little bit more than most of you would if you're doing high bar. But a low bar might look like this. So another example of why it's not really low bar, high bar, front squat that matters. It's how you perform the squat. I could do low bar, sit vertically with my torso, and not much has changed from the front squat. So, something to think about. Dynamic variable resistance, um, as that's what my man, let's see if I can move my little, I can't. <laughs> um, anyway, dynamic variable resistance is, that's what um, Andy Galpin coined the term, but in the past it's been known as accommodating resistance by you know Louis Simmons. I think he's the one who might have coined that term, but don't quote me. And so now the maximum external resistance is shifted to end range of motion. So it's going to be as you stand up. As you can see, and this is a good illustration of how the moment arm is lengthened as one squats. Now this is they're looking at the knee joint, so the quads in the bottom. You see that line, the little red line is maximized. But when you're using bands and chains, it doesn't matter because there, the the force, the mass is increased as one stands up, accommodating for that decrease in moment arm. So overall, an increase in concentric velocities experienced because when you're at your weakest, there's a less load, so you're able to accelerate out of the hole better. So sports specific joint angles are strengthened if you look over here uh, at the guy running you know when the foot strikes the ground there's not the joint and the knee angle is not very extreme and at most when it's in the air experiencing no force is when that joint angle is the the, the biggest so if you want to strengthen the joint as to where it's producing force you know during sport you might consider using bands and chains a little bit so you're, also, it's been known to increase the amount of power that one is able to exhume. So, and, but there is a difference in bands and chains, and we're going to talk about it. Tight, stay tight, sit vertical. Into the bar, yeah. Faster, faster. So you see, Good. This is Ryan. Yeah. Squatting. Tight, stay tight, sit vertical. So we use bands now because Into the bar, looking. yeah. It only seems to tight, make sense tight, that bands vertical. becomes the natural choice. Into the bar. More chance. Yeah. Faster, faster. The bands are yeah. They're literally pulling. Yeah. They don't weigh anything. It has nothing to do tight, with the mass. Tight, stay tight, sit vertical. They're pulling. 
energized. And then the ball. That elastic yeah. energy is accelerated more. Faster. No effect in the bottom, right. you know, the connective tissue, tight, all right, stay tight, sit vertical. Spindles. And the overall stress cycle yeah. is uh, faster, faster. Yeah. Um, faster, faster, eccentric contractions, tight, stay tight, tight. sit vertical, hypertrophy, faster, into the bar, contractions, yeah. faster, power, faster. and good. Yeah. All important to not just weightlifters, but to tight, sports, stay tight, sit vertical, basketball, any sport where you need power, into the bar. Yeah, faster, faster. Yeah. 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 This is patient here. Yeah, tight, stay tight. A little bit different. You're not gonna get that increased pull because really, chains is about mass being acted on. My grabs, when you're sitting on the bottom, that mass, that mass is minimal. So they're able to accelerate a little bit faster. On the more specific for support for strength supports like you know like power I feel like uh, there's a point it, in the air, yeah. tight, stay tight. transition from bands to chains before going into straight weight because it's more of a feel. When you walk back it's more what they're gonna experience in straight weight. So you're gonna get improved rate coding because you're learning to master it and you're getting uh, percentage of what that helps and uh synchronization is improved that means the alpha motor neuron number of those neurons are called on at the same time Patient, at a greater amount, yeah. tight, stay tight. to move faster at higher rates. So, uh, possibly safer to walk back. Bands can be pretty intense and walk back. Maybe a monolith might be better. You know in bands how it's sitting in the movie. It has nothing to do with this one, but just rock and roll. So, you might want to consider using like a monolith type attachment. Come on, Tank. Come on, Tank. Hey, sit, air, yeah. Tight, stay tight. Wait, and some people are irritated by bands. I know, like, not Tank, the guy in this video you just watched. The bands right now are irritated with his hip and back, so it's not, there's no, uh, stimulation that is worth irritating someone to the point of pain. So, so it makes change the better choice for him. Now, if you watch this video over here, I'm going to turn this up a little bit. <laughs> you can see the sport we do is you're producing force at a very high rate. You know, more so than maybe even in most of the sports you do. So, yes, he's, li he's lifting 462 pounds there, but the speed of which he's doing it is at a very high rate. So, you see the way he moves from 400 pounds. Other than that front squat, everything is fast. And especially the jerk. It's like a split second. Not even seconds. It's like... <laughs> okay. The celebration, a lot. But it seems to make sense. Moving like this in the squat would create a better adaptation than this. Both have their place. But... When once the person has reached about you know point or two point two times their body weight, I would think most of the literature would agree that at that point maybe bands and chains are going to be better. So um, why we use bands and chains? Power and rate of force development is is all that matters to us in this sport. A high force and or power achieved at a slow rate is useless to us. So even people you know, that lift very heavy are able to produce higher amounts of power, but at slower rates. So their top end power, aka their peak, their peak power, is produced at a slower rate, which does nothing good for weightlifting for most athletes. So uh, I point to things like a worm squat. You know, that's great for powerlifters, not so much for weightlifters. So I refer back to the article, you know, regarding that. You know, adaptations from various repetition velocities. Uh, I did that for Jim Ware. This is also the video I made on that um, topic. But like I said, once an athlete reaches 2.2, uh, most of the uh, times their body weight in the back squat, most literature would say at that time, it's better to be specific. So, appreciate you guys. Here are some of the references. Um, I got a shout out to Andy Galpin, Dr. Andy Galpin on the Huberman Lab podcast. Um, this is the link to that podcast where he actually has 
done the studies now on bands and chains and proven them to be a, the, the stimuli is of really good importance, really important to most athletes. So go watch that, listen to it. I can't wait till that study comes out. Um, I've been using bands for years and, you know, and the weightlifting is a finicky sport. So people don't like a lot of change. So, I've, you know, when I first got into the sport, I, got, I took a lot of flack, but now it's catching on. So a lot of the better coaches are using them. So I'm getting less and less flight, but now the facts are out. It's sad that it took that to prove my point. It seems to be common sense, but now it's proven. So anyway, thanks for listening.